Good morning. Welcome to GSC Live Mornings. It's May 1st, May Day. Um, I'm thinking there are going to be some May baskets delivered around everywhere today. Well, this is day 49 in, uh, let's call this our time together. Instead of time apart, let's try to call it our time together in the variety of ways that you meet with people, whether um, this way or by calling people on the telephone or saying hi to somebody across the street. Let's start calling it our time together. Uh, today, my cup of coffee is uh, was poured into a cup, beautiful cup, commemorating Minnesota State Park's Nurse Strand Big Woods, not far from here, close to Nurse Strand. And um, the, uh, the, the cup here um, has a picture of a very rare plant, uh, the trout lily, which blooms only in early spring in April. And I honestly think I spotted one along the trail here in Rochester this spring. I'll have to ask my good friend Kathy tonight when I talk to her um, whether or not that was possible. Anyway, today we're going to dive in uh, again. And um, this comes from Matthew 27. The chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this imposter said while he was still alive, after three days I will rise again. Therefore command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise his disciples may go and steal him away and tell people he's been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard. Go make it as secure as you can. Um, there's a very short phrase that I hang on to. It's called Love Wins. In fact, there's a book by Rob Bell by that name. Commend it to your reading. Um, here's a few words about this wondrous love. The last deception would be worse than the first. In the minds of the chief priests and Pharisees, just what is the first deception? That Jesus was able to rally a following? Are they jealous of Jesus' popularity? Do they fear a possible uprising? Or are the chief priests, Pharisees, Pilate, and all the people who surround Jesus unable to come to terms with his wondrous love? Political leaders tend to rely on power, maneuvering, and political clout. In their minds, Jesus' first deception might be, love wins. But as the chief priests and Pharisees continue to plan and plot, they're just one resurrected breath away from the truth. Fast forward 2,000 years. Many people still rely on power, and political clout to make their way in the world. It's up to the baptized community of this crucified one to both carry and live his message. Love wins. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? It is the wondrous love of Jesus who is slumbering in the tomb and about to come to life forever. Reminds me of a saying one of my seminary professors used oftentimes at the end of a lecture when he would get all wound up about God's grace and God's love and that the really, in the end, there's not much that we can do about how much God loves us. And he would say, you know, Jesus was resurrected from the dead and he came out of the tomb and he's intent on catching and he's going to catch you because he runs a lot faster than you. Love wins. Let us pray. Gracious, merciful, living God, we offer you our thanks and praise for the greatest love the world has ever seen or known. In these very unusual times, at least unusual to us, help us to ponder your love. 
and help us to dream and imagine how love can win even in this time. Perhaps the many ways that love can win in little parts of every one of our little days. Help us to bring your wondrous love into this world that needs it so badly now. Amen. Dear friends, have a lovely day and may love win in your life.